Yo, what's up, people? It's your boy. I'm Chris the Dom One, and I am back with another video. Got another new edition video, man. The the more y'all keep watching them, the more I'm gonna keep putting them out. Now we all know that Bobby Brown's bio flick is gonna be premiering on BET. I believe it's on September the fifth or September the tenth. It's a two part. It's a two part documentary about Bobby Brown. Uh, king of r&b things of that nature uh the same actor that portrayed bobby brown in the new edition story is going to be starring in this bio uh this biopic which i, I feel like is a good thing uh news some, some little tidbits that a lot of people don't know about bobby brown uh when bobby brown got let go from new edition his first album he produced it himself okay he also had some help from a uh, cameo uh with i'll be good with you uh i'll be your girlfriend i'll be your girlfriend that was a a hit maker back in the days on the radio that got tremendous airplay and some more tidbits about bobby brown when bobby brown was this uh, when Bobby Brown uh, popularity started to rise and started making a lot of money, he was making boatloads of money. He was making so much money. Uh, he was spending the money before he can actually receive the money. Bobby Brown used to, when he used to be on tour, if he sees, if he pulls up on someone's car and they had a nice ride, a nice whip, Bobby Brown would try to purchase that car and he'll drive that car all around town and then he'll park it somewhere and then move on to the next city. He doesn't even keep the car, all right? Uh, another little tidbit about Bobby Brown is when he did the Don't Be, Cru uh, Don't Be Cruel project, uh, Teddy Riley produced the song, It's My Prerogative, I'll Do What I Want to Do. Uh, Bobby Brown wanted to sing that song a certain way to uh, show the world that he has the chops, he has the vocals. And Teddy Riley wanted him to uh, tone it down a little a little bit on the way how he was uh, singing the song. Uh, he wanted him to sing it. Don't think something I'm crazy. I really don't care. That's my prerogative. They say I'm nasty. He wanted Bobby Brown to sing it that way. And Bobby Brown would, uh, you know, go back and forth with Ted, uh, Teddy Riley until ultimately uh, Bobby Brown said, you know what? You're the hit maker. You're the producer. I'm just going to do it the way you want to do it. And the rest, they say, was history. All right. Now, Bobby Brown started, uh, you know, he started with New Edition. He came out with his first sophomore hit, I mean, uh, album, uh, King of Stage. He had a couple of tracks on there, uh, and that introduced the world to Bobby Brown. Now, Bobby Brown transcended from that album to Don't Be Cruel. Don't Be Cruel is Bobby Brown's most successful album. It produced a lot of hit songs. Uh, don't be cruel. Because I wouldn't be that way to you. I know, no, no, I don't be cruel. He did that. He did my prerogative. The truth about Roni. She's a sweet little girl. And rock with you. He had a lot of hits on uh, Don't Be Cruel album. Uh, Babyface produced a lot of tracks for him. Teddy Riley produced a lot of tracks for him. Uh, that album uh, blew Bobby Brown into ultimately the king of R&B. Uh, Bobby Brown was on the same stratosphere as a Janet Jackson, as a Michael Jackson, a Prince, okay? Uh, Bobby Brown had a lot of... Uh, had a lot of sponsor deals uh, with Budweiser. Budweiser sponsored his tour, uh, on, uh, the Bobby Brown tour. So Bobby Brown was making a lot of money hand over fist. And that that album uh, 
you know, for the rest of the people in the R&B community, we all knew we, we always knew Bobby Brown and New Edition. But Bobby, but that launched Bobby Brown into another stratosphere when you're talking about uh, the pop culture, uh, you know, everything that's outside the urban culture. Uh, it that album uh, put Bobby Brown on the map. OK, uh, Bobby Brown uh, also got in trouble in the with the law. Uh, he had, you know, troubles with baby mama dramas and things of that nature. And that album right there, you know, it was bad enough when Bobby Brown was spending money hand over fist. But, you know, Bobby Brown, uh, you know, he didn't want to be in the same situation when he was once with New Edition, where the management was pr literally, you know, taking the money from New Edition. They wasn't even making um, nothing off of Candy Girl. And Bobby Brown uh, uh, said in in our in our interview he wanted a better situation on, on his solo gig. Uh, uh, the rest of his uh, the rest of the New Edition members saw the rise of Bobby Brown with Don't Be Cruel. And that uh, inlined the other artists of, in the New Edition family tree to do their own solo projects, okay? Uh, Ralph Tresvant debuted in that same time with Don't Be Cruel. Uh, uh, Johnny Gill, you know, but Johnny Gill always had a solo career. Bell Bib the Vogue teamed up. They there was a a, a, a three a, a, a threesome with and they had some uh, hits uh, under their umbrella. So uh everybody was trying to you know get their money on the side. And that ultimately, when everybody was in good standings, that ultimately uh allowed Bobby Brown to be on the home again project. And it went from a five-man group to a six-man group. Okay. So Bobby Brown, uh, you know, this documentary is going to depict a lot of things that Bobby Brown did. Uh, a lot of things people don't realize what Bobby Brown did. Uh, he, he produced uh, uh, tracks with not only Ralph Tresvant, but with Bell Bill DeVoe. Uh, you know, so Bobby Brown was always in the scene. Uh, a lot of people thought that Bobby Brown had issues uh, with New Edition, but it, it it wasn't even about that. Bobby Brown issues was more so uh, with his addiction to drugs, uh, the fame, and as well as uh, management in MCA. But, you know, Bobby Brown and uh, MCA had a business type of relationship and MCA allowed Bobby Brown to be the bad boy he wanted to be. OK, he also did. Uh, he also produced for Ralph Tresvant and Ralph Tresvant helped him on some uh, vocals on the uh, Don't Be Cruel project. Now, Bobby Brown was, you know, the talk of the town with the Don't Be Cruel uh, also with uh, Home Again. Uh, and then he also married uh, Whitney Houston in that time span. Now, Bobby Brown had a lot of things on, on the uh, on the stove, sort of say. And when Bobby Brown came out with his third album, Bobby, uh, not that many hits. Uh, there was a, a couple of, of, you know, like uh, uh, Good Enough uh, what was a great, uh, phenomenal hit. It, uh, brought you back to the essence of Bobby, uh, Bobby Brown, back to the bar baritone voice, uh, the, the screaming on the mic, so to say, uh, it brought you back to when Bobby Brown did Mr. Telephone Man. Uh, it brought the very best of Bobby Brown, a uh, baby face produced that, uh, a track, uh, you know, Humping around was a Teddy Riley thing. I want to get away. I want to get away. I want to get away. Uh, that album. Sorry about all the singing. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, that uh, was produced by Teddy Riley. Uh, th there were, and then that ultimately did. Uh, they uh, MCA came out with the remix album. Uh, Bobby, that Bobby album really didn't, MCA was expecting the Bobby album to eclipse the Don't Be Cruel out, uh, project, and it didn't. Uh, it had some hits, but it wasn't as famous as the Don't Be Cruel. Um, you know, uh, 
Bobby uh, Bobby Brown was was ultra popular, more so in the R and B. But with the Don't Be Cruel project, a lot of people that was outside of the R and B community, uh, that's when they first you know was introduced by Bobby Brown. Uh, the Bobby album didn't do what uh, what MCA expected it to do. And Bobby Brown was, you know, lackluster in the next couple of years. You and you, you, Bobby Brown even illustrated this in a VH1 documentary. You know, after the Bobby Project, he was really heavy into the drugs. Uh, the Forever Project came out. It was a flop. Uh, it was maybe one song on there, but they had other potential songs that could have. Uh, been hit makers and Bobby Brown did away with, uh, you know, having hit makers around him, having a baby face, having a Teddy rally, uh, a cameo, uh, you know, a Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. He didn't have none of those uh, hit makers. He, you know, chose a different path and a different route. And he really didn't put his whole heart into the forever project. I felt like if he did of uh, the forever project, it would have been a, a lot. It would have been preceded a lot better, but it would never eclipse the Bobby uh, project. OK. And Bobby Brown started getting heavy into drugs. Um, uh, you know, he, he was in and out of court, child support court. He couldn't um, you know, he had issues with his other baby mamas, um, you know, and uh, him and Whitney Houston. They was on this uh, drug spree where it was constantly uh, taking drugs. Now, a lot of people felt like uh, Bobby Brown introduced Whitney Houston into this drug world. Um, but in actuality, Whit Whitney Houston had her own demons. Um, you know, there were, you know, people just now got uh, this news flash about Whitney Houston, about she was, used, she used to be molested by um, Dion Wardrick family, uh, someone from Dion Wardrick family. And uh, that spiraled uh, Whitney, you know, Whitney Houston and, you know, down the path of the drug world. And, you know, um, it, when you have trauma in your life, it's easier to be hooked on drugs than if you had, uh, you know, you know, a, you know, a lovely childhood and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, but. Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston were dependent on each other, but they was also the reasons why they could never get off the the drugs. OK, um, Bobby Brown started slowly but surely getting out of the drug path. And when they broke up, you saw Bobby Brown making steps to be clean and sober. And Whitney Houston was dibbling and dabbling. And we all know about her tragic death. God rest her soul. But, um, you know, it took Bobby Brown to be separated from Whitney Houston, to start uh, being clean and sober and being concerned for himself. Now, is all this going to be in the documentary? Uh, I think there's going to be bits and pieces and the pieces that, that I talk. Well, that that, you know, what I talked about and what the world know about Bob Bobby Brown. A lot of those things are going to be twisted and they'll be mentioned in the movie. The movie is going to be uh, it, the movie is, is going to be a two day event. Uh, they're going to have some. Of course, they're going to have some Whitney Houston topics uh, when he was with the home again. When he went back to New Edition, they're going to have the rise and fall of Bobby Brown. And we just gonna have to wait and see what they're going to illustrate on BET. But that's all I got to say about, uh, you know, Bobby Brown, the BET movie premiere. And I hope BET continues the Bobby, the, the new edition family tree with maybe doing uh, a bio flick, biopic on Belle Biv DeVoe. Uh, maybe Ralph Trezvant, maybe Johnny Gill, you know, keep doing this on and on and on. So a lot of R&B historians can remember those times. And a lot of people that are new to the R&B scene will understand the history and the dynamics, the struggles that New Edition had. But guys, tell me what you think. Rate, comment, subscribe. It's your boy. I'm Chris the Don One and I am out.